Scott. I do not like waking up exhausted. It's generally a result of just exhausting myself to sleep with no sense of night routine. Which in my opinion is just as important as a morning routine. Because if you wake up in a funk, <laughs> so we're gonna get back, uh, reset today. Reset the night routine so we can get back in, uh, get back in the flow. Let's go. Okay, let's be real. The last time of day that we need a pick me up is right after we wake me up. I mean, I get it. I feel ya. I'm there. Sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do, you know what I'm saying? Cheers. Now, to figure out what pieces, elements, things, yeah, yeah, yeah. make up your night routine, to each is their own. Gotta find what works best for you. But that doesn't mean we can't look to... Hemingway, Einstein, Austin, Picasso, Beethoven, Fritz Gerald, Dickens, Freud, and Mozart. To see kind of just what they did. See what sticks. On with the day! Benjamin Franklin. He actually wrote a timetable for his day, and the last four hours he would use to put things in their place, supper, music or diversion, or conversation with examination of the day. And he would always ask himself the one question at the end of the day, what good have I done today? Seems like everyone had little luxuries, little things to decompress at the nighttime. Sigmund Freud, for example, smoked cigars like a madman. Sometimes he'd tear through 20 in a day. Louis Armstrong, a lifelong insomniac, relied on music to lull himself to sleep. Before he'd get into bed, however, he had to administer the last of his daily home remedies, a potent herbal laxative. Laxative? Try a little Epsom salt in your tea. That'll do it. Just a little, though. Here's an interesting one. A B.F. Skinner <clears throat> would wake up twice in the middle of the night. His timer rang four times a day, midnight, 1 a.m., 5 a.m., and 7 a.m. That nightly hour of sleeplessness had become an integral part of his routine. William James, brilliant philosopher. The great thing about life is to make our nervous system our ally instead of our enemy. The more of the details of our daily life that we can hand over to the effortless custody of automatism, the more our higher powers of the mind will be set free for their own proper work. Cool. <laughs> there are some wild night routines out there. So, Frederick Schiller, he would always have a jar of, or a drawer full of rotten apples in his workroom because he said he needed the smell of their decay in order to feel the urge to write. George Sand produced a minimum of 20 manuscript pages nearly every night of her adult life. It was not unusual for her to slip out of her lover's bed to begin a new novel in the middle of the night. It was just developing something that their body could get in the rhythm of that worked for them. They wouldn't have been famous and made it in this book if they hadn't. 